use of ideographs make public art viewers less innovative. If you remember from lecture, the term ideograph can be defined as a word frequently used in political discourse that uses an abstract concept to su develop support for political positions, or more simply, a one-term sum of orientation. We chose to focus on three main points that we believe help our own argument. Number one, arguers use similar words throughout their debates. Number two, the arguer relies on the audience to pick up on the connotation, not the denotation, of the ideograph. And lastly, number three, ideographs can't be used to establish or test a universal truth. Take a listen to our friend Megan and see what she has to say about supporting our first point. The use of ideographs makes public arguers less innovative. Consider the dialogue of every major controversial political issue. For instance, abortion. Political figures in the court system alike have shifted the dialogue. We no longer ask, should a woman be allowed to have an abortion? Instead, the question has become, is there a right to privacy? What exactly is privacy? Its definition seems to shift depending on audience, historical time period, and context. We think we know what privacy means, but different bodies such as the general population, the Supreme Court, and the NSA all use it in drastically different ways. This is what makes privacy an ideograph. And like other ideographs, it is a mechanism employed by public arguers to talk around issues instead of about them. Arguers can also use ideographs as building blocks for their argument. For example, the arguer can use the ideograph to build his argument, rather than to use the ideograph to support his own unique idea. This makes the arguer less innovative because it is a form of a red herring fallacy common in public speaking. Second point. The arguers looking to the audience to pick up on the connotation, not the denotation, of the ideograph, thus seeking emotional appeal from the audience. It's controversious. Did you vote for the controversia that was funnier and had more emotional appeal? Or did you vote for the controversia that had more logical evidence? More likely than not, you voted for the funnier video because it had more emotional appeal to you due to the lack of creativity and innovativeness by the other creators. The arguer tends to focus more on ethos of the emotional appeal and less on logos of the logical appeal. For example, according to dictionary.com, the definition of equality is the state of quality of being equal or the correspondence in quantity, degree, value, rank, or ability. The common connotation associated with equality is that everyone has the same rights. But is this true in America? Reflect on historical instances where equality was being advocated. Equality is still an ambiguous term for not only minorities, but also for gender relations in America today. How do you define equality? Me? Ideographs cannot be used to test or establish knowledge, and for that reason they are very subjective. For example, the ideograph equality can mean different things to different people. For example, it can mean social, economic, gender, or health equality. We really don't know. So, when speakers use ideographs, they leave it open for interpretation, and they leave the audience wondering what they really mean, and therefore they're not innovative. If speakers wanted to be more creative with the way they present their ideas, they should use different words and different ideas instead of ideographs to portray what they're really trying to get the audience to say, instead of leaving it open-ended. The use of ideographs make public arguers less innovative. Because arguers use similar ideographs in their debates, the arguer relies on the audience to pick up the connotation, not the denotation, of the ideograph, and ideographs can't be used to establish or test a universal truth.